So the bus stop method, if we're looking at 936 divided by 3, that's what we're going to work through just now. So when we're doing our bus stop method, we have to remember how to write it first of all. So to write it, we have to think about our biggest number, our dividend, and our divisor, the number we're dividing it by. So if we are drawing our bus stop method, our biggest number, our dividend, sits inside the bus. Okay, that's how we remember it. And the divisor, the smaller number, is the number that is driving the bus. So we've got the bus driver, our divisor, and we've got our dividend, which is the number we're dividing, which is sitting inside the bus. So step one, my class, remember that our bus driver has to work through the bus to collect the tickets. So that is the way that the bus driver is going to go up the bus because he goes to one passenger, then onto the next one, then onto the next one. So if you remember it that way, then we know that the first number that we have to deal with is our hundreds number. It is the first number we get to after our divisor. So, 9 divided by 3. If we use our counting up method for this, we count up using our 3 times table because that's what we're dividing by. So I'm going to quickly just jot down my 3 times table stations down the side here so I've got them there when I need them. Okay, let's just go to 30 because we're not going to need to go any higher than that for this question. So 9 divided by 3, if we're counting up, we need to know how many jumps to take to get up to 9. So 1, 2, 3. So we made 3 jumps and we got to the answer 9. We made it up to the number 9, which is where we wanted to get to. So the answer, 9 divided by 3, is 3. The answer always goes on top. We know that we got to the number 9. We managed to do 9 divided by 3. So because we got up to 9, that's the number we made it to, we put that one down underneath. Because this is how we're going to check if we've got any remainders. So to check if we've got any remainders, this now becomes a little subtraction underneath. So 9 take away 9 is 0. So we know that 9 divides by 3 equally and the answer is 3. Now that we've done step 1, which is our hundreds, we go on to step 2, which is our tens. And all we are doing is we are repeating the same method that we used for our hundreds number. So 3 divided by 3. Let's count how many jumps we need to make in our stations to get 3 divided by 3. 1. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. That is our answer. We made one jump to get to 3 in our 3 times tables. We can check that by using our inverse again, which I spoke about earlier. The inverse is the opposite operation. 3 times 1 equals 3, so we know that is correct. Again, similar to our hundreds column, we managed to get to the number we were looking for. We managed to get to 3. We were able to do 3 divided by 3 without any problem. So 3 then comes down below. And once we've brought it down below, we write down what number we got to underneath. 3 take away 3 equals 0. So the same step. 9 take away 9 gave us 0. We bring our tens digit down. 3 take away 3 equals 0. So now we're on to our last digit, which is our hundreds. So I'm going to bring that all the way down to beside our 0. So we put our hundreds digit in. Now we've got 6 divided by 3. So let's count up to see what 6 divided by 3 is going to be. 1, 2, 3, 6. 
So we've made two jumps to get to six. So our answer to six divided by three is two. And we managed to get to six. We managed to do six divided by three. So that means I have to put my six underneath because that's the number we got to. And again, same as above, that becomes our new subtraction. Six take away six gives us zero. So we've now worked through our hundreds, we've worked through our tens, and we've worked through our ones. Our answer to six hundred, eh, sorry, 936 divided by three is 312 with no remainders. This section under here works out our remainders. This section up here is our full whole answer. Okay, so that is using our bus stop method to find out 936 divided by 3. Now, not all of our bus stop methods work quite as nicely as these numbers did. So I'm going to work through one more with you before I give you a couple of examples to work through on your own. So the last um, division that we're going to work through together is 321 divided by 3. Okay, so first step, we have to actually write it in a bus stop method. So remember that our dividend sits inside the bus and our divisor drives the bus. So we've got our three, we're dividing by three, that's driving the bus. And we've got our dividend 321 inside the bus. So it is exactly the same steps as we worked through in the previous example. We start with our hundreds. Then we go into our tens, then we go into our ones. Now we're using the three times table again for this one, if we're using the inverse. So we know that because we're dividing by three. So I'm just going to count up again. You don't have to do this on the side. But if you would feel more comfortable having it there, then I would say it's a good idea to have it down because then you can visually see the three times table stations. But if you know it well enough to have it in your head, then please use that. So starting with our step one, now we've actually drawn our bus stop method. We're looking at our hundreds. So three divided by three. So if we use our stations that we've already written down, 3 divided by 3, we're jumping up once because we're counting up to 3. So we know our answer is going to be 1. And what number did we manage to get to? Well, we actually managed to get to 3. So we have to put that one underneath. And then this one becomes our subtraction to find out if we've got any remainders here. Now, we know already we don't have any remainders, but we have to work through this process to keep it flowing so that when we get to our ones digit, we can work out all of our remainders and just double check that we are right. So three divided by three is one, three take away three is zero. So that's our hundreds dealt with. Now we're going to move along. I'm going to bring my tens digit down and that is now the next digit we are dealing with. Okay, so two divided by three. Now, there's a problem with this one because we cannot do 2 divided by 3. 2 is too small. So we cannot jump up to 3 because 3 is too big. We have to find the number below the one we're looking for so that we are able to find out what our remainder is going to be because this one is a remainder. So we cannot do 2 divided by 3. So it still becomes unsolved. It's a zero. It cannot be done at the moment. However, because we've not dealt with the two, we still also have not dealt with the one. So instead of looking at these two numbers separately, if we bring them together to make 21, 21 divided by 3, 
Let's check our stations. Yep, that does definitely work. We can share 21 divided by 3 equally. So we're going to jump 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 jumps. 21 divided by 3 equals 7. We managed to get to 21. So I put my 21 underneath so that we can create our subtraction. 21, take away 21, gives us zero. So our answer, remember, is the number at the top. Our remainder is the number at the bottom. So 321 divided by 3 equals 107 with no remainders.